I'm Gerdes, I'm an artist, a watercolor artist living in Mauritius. I've just completed this painting and this video is all about this painting. The painting, uh, the drawing, the painting of it and uh, have fun watching it and I appreciate you watching my channel. Thank you for being back at the channel and looking at my um, painting of the umbrellas. This is a very long painting where I show uh, the whole process of painting the umbrellas. Um, these people were very clever when they designed the Cadorn waterfront and as a tourist attraction. As you get off the boat, uh, you would find uh, a big pedestrian street and uh, on the left hand side is all the restaurants facing the waterfront itself, the harbour side, and then on the right hand side there are different shops. There's a movie theatre, there are small vendors uh, selling food, uh, like a juice bar, there's a food court with very competitive prices, and uh, people love to go there because of the, the vibe. There's always a lot of tourists walking around, and there's a lot of tourist shops as well. There's even a market. A, a, a sort of a bizarre market where um, it's a sort of a craft market where uh, artists have small stands and some of them are sitting there working while you walk past and uh, so you can see real Mauritian stuff. Um, unfortunately there are some people that are selling Chinese imports but um, it's also good to see artists selling uh, real Mauritian uh, genuine handicrafts. Uh, I like to go to the waterfront and uh, when you get there and you get to the central promenade you will notice the umbrellas immediately. There are uh, over 120 umbrellas that are being held up in the air by cables and uh, these umbrellas are uh, start off as being brightly covered, colored and then as time passes they fade because of the sun and every now and then they are being replaced and uh, this painting shows the umbrellas in full color and uh, um, I managed to capture the feel of the Kudong waterfront umbrellas in this painting by the reflection of light that passes through the umbrellas um, it's quite important to capture that because you can just put a solid color on there and uh, but I wanted to get the real feel of watercolor uh, through the transparency of the trans of the umbrellas I paint in watercolors uh, because I like the the effect that I get and uh, the limitations we have in watercolor is the size of the paper. Um, I, I, I sometimes paint on a, on a large paper, um, but I find that my smaller paintings sell quicker. So this is a medium size. And um, I sometimes do a meter by 71. Uh, I still have a couple of papers like that, which I need to paint on. And, uh, but this one is a 76 by 55 centimeter painting and uh, which is a good size for an average home and uh, we, we paint in this size primarily for sales to get quick sales but a painting like this takes a long time to complete and uh, uh, this took me uh, many hours and hours of painting and uh, you will see the whole process when you watch this video uh, it takes time to make an artwork like this and um, I have to ask a proper money for an original artwork like this um, we also nowadays merchandise our work we uh, paint uh, we print on on um, placemats and aprons and things like that uh, to get our name out there and um, this specific painting will look very good on a on an apron i think that will be sold in uh, the mauritian craft shops so as soon as i have a chance i'm going to
put it on an apron and uh, my wife Anneli will stitch the aprons. Um, she's very good to that. Um, I want to talk today about um, some aspects of watercolor. This is part of a watercolor range and this is only for um, patrons. And um, so if you're a watercolor artist, you will enjoy this uh, range of talks about me and watercolors. Um, this a technique of watercoloring where you paint a specific color in a very light wash and then you overlay it with a secondary color to get another color. Let me give you an example. Let's say you paint something in a yellow and you then overlay it with a transparent blue on top, then you will get a green. So uh, by trying to get uh, purples, purples are quite difficult, violets, you can paint a light pink, like a permanent rose onto the lily and then use uh, an overpaint of a light colored blue on top of that to get a purple and um, this is this takes some experience to do and what you've got to be careful with is that uh, the bottom color is not that soluble because if you start with the top color on top of the bottom one and all the paint starts lifting then your brush will become dirty very quickly and you will not get uh, this nice um, sort of translucent color coming through. So what I suggest you do is that um, you make like a cross hatch pat pattern of um, yellow, your red and your blue. Three bands of color running vertically down the paper. And then use the same colors again and run it across from the left to the right horizontally and where they cross you will be able to see the overlay of the color and you were to use it with different reds and different different yellows and different blues and then you, you will eventually see which ones of them work very work best in this way so oftentimes we paint a color onto the paper and we uh, are not so happy with the result and uh, we can then use another color on top of that to change the underlying colors uh, hue completely also or the color the you or the color and um, so uh, this is a popular way for watercolors to work um, what you can also do is make a big circle with one color and then make another circle that overlays this one and a third circle with another color. And then there where the three colors overlap, you'll get a totally different color. And this will also, if you have a little uh, drawing book or a big sheet of paper that you put up on the wall, you'll be able to see how the different paints react with one another. Uh, this is the reason why people uh, don't really make watercolors at home is because uh, uh, homemade watercolor will not react well when you put one color on top of another. Um, there's another difference which most people don't know and that is that uh, pan colors are use less glycerine in the paint and uh, therefore uh, paint colors tend to react differently when you paint an, um, an area and overpaint it again. Um, the ones that come out of tubes might uh, contain more glycerin and so they might be slightly more soluble once dry on your paper than your paint colors. So um, why use paint colors? Because uh, they use less glycerin in pan colors and um, 
I didn't really know that until I read up on it recently. Um, so I hope that you have learned something about watercolors and about overlaying in this uh, video of mine. Now you will notice that uh, I first made a drawing, a careful drawing of this, this whole scene and uh, it's actually a meticulous drawing because I wanted to get all the receding uh, umbrellas in the center part and um, it's only successful if you paint them all. If I skipped some of them and I wanted to get in a become in a hurry, I would not have gotten this uh, really full painting that I have here. Uh, I then decided to first paint the uh, umbrellas in the middle and after painting them, I posted the photo on Reddit and somebody said, oh, I wish for you just to stop right there, but I didn't. I continued to this one until I um, have it completely finished as you see here. Uh, sometimes as an artist we may stop when we think it's, the painting has reached a successful stage and uh, um, it's good when we stop at that stage because we can oftentimes overwork a painting but in this instance I wanted the painting to look like it does now and uh, um, where I changed it from my reference that I had, by making it much darker in the center, I get a more dramatic effect of the eye being drawn in into the center of the painting. Um, what was important for me was the reflection of the shadows down on the pavement, and I think I got this very successful. Uh, I really appreciate it that you are watching this video. I know it's a long video and I'm just rambling on about watercolors and my, about my life here in Mauritius. Um, my day usually works like this. I start up, I wake up at about half past five or six-ish and uh, I stand up and then um, I go for a bit of a pre-walk and then um, make myself and my wife a nice cup of coffee and we sit and we discuss the day and have some coffee together and then I uh, would plan my day and start uh, painting by about seven and um, currently I'm painting here in a reading room because of the quality of the light that comes in through the window and, but if she wants to do stitching, she chases me out and I have to go up to my studio. But I enjoy sitting here, spending time with her and uh, just hearing the birds through the window. I don't know if you heard them in the background. Um, so anyway, enjoy your day. God bless you and uh, keep on painting.